Hey y'all, it's me Nina. I'm back with another, and I'm back with another video for this week in which I am doing a book review of Glennon Doyle's novel memoir, Untamed. And I normally don't do book reviews or that type of thing on this channel, but I felt like I personally was looking for things like this, video reviews, and I saw nothing from a Christian's perspective. And I thought it was worth putting out another voice of a Christian person who has read this book because I'm guessing some Christians are would not read it and Glennon Doyle actually started out her career as a Christian author and this book is the number one book on the New York Times bestseller so I thought it was worth discussing and I thought that there would be other people like me who had this book recommended to them thought they would check it out and was pretty shocked when they started reading it and seeing what was actually inside and I will have a little bit of a disclaimer that I did enjoy the book but I do have some caveats and yeah I also have a Goodreads profile I literally just made one because I got a Kindle and I've been reading like crazy so I had this Google Doc where I keep track of all the books I read and one of my friends pointed out Goodreads to me and how you can, you know, just have like a record that, there as well. So if you want to join me in that community, go ahead. I also have this cute necklace, which I'm like super proud of. It has my birth year and then I just love this other one. These are both Etsy necklaces and I'll link them down below in case you're interested in these styles. I layered these two and I think it's um, super dainty. So there's that and i'm going to start off as always i like to start off with um a little bit of a synopsis of what the book is about and then i will warn you and we'll go into spoilers and thoughts and whatnot so this book is about glennon doyle and her life and she started out her books were about christianity and overcoming addiction and she eventually in her second book right after she published it she divorced her husband and she fell in love with a woman so she is now in a gay relationship i don't know why i said it like that but yeah i mean you don't see a lot of um christian writers turned you know whatever so i thought that was really interesting to start and i heard i even looked at amazon reviews some people were disappointed in the book because they thought it would be more of a love story between glennon and abby her now spouse but it i think it does touch a lot on that but basically it's about her story of learning to become untamed learning to take out some of the barriers or things that society tells you you have to be like and yeah i figured now i'm going to go into the spoilers and my thoughts on that and the good the bad the ugly and so on i did enjoy this book but i do think that there are a lot of problematic messages in this book and i think glenn herself is not entirely sure if she is christian or not and she does mention that a lot throughout the book so first if you are a religious person i think that this book does crap on christianity a lot it says a lot of negative things about how um you know eve was actually eve was right to eat the apple you know like oh like we should maybe that's actually a you know something that's telling us what we should be doing you know rather than a cautionary tale what we should not be doing and um you know just like rules overall and um i'm sorry my apple watch kept going off so i was gonna say exercise but ugh basically about rules in society and the story opens up about seeing these lion this lion who was in this cage and how it went after this um you know this like little fake rabbit and was tamed to act a certain way when really if the lion wanted to it could eat all these people you know and basically saying how in society all of us have been tamed and conditioned to act certain ways when we really should not be like that we should be more you know how we feel our desires our impulses what we really want and that was one of the problematic messages i saw in the book as a whole so be before i go into that i do want to read some excerpts that she does say about religion and i just took pictures for my kindle so i don't know the exact page number okay she said on page 242 my kindle version i don't know if i'd call myself a christian anymore that label suggests certainty and i have none it suggests the desire to convert others and that's the last thing i want to do it suggests ex exclusive belonging and i'm not sure I belong anywhere anymore. Part of me wants to peel that label off, set it down, and try to meet person to person, soul to soul, without any layers between us. 
but I find myself unable to let go fully because I wash my hands of the Jesus story is to abandon some something beautiful to money hungry high deckers. It'd be like surrendering the concept of beauty to the fashion industry or magic sexuality to internet porn dealers. I want beauty, I want sex, I want faith. I just don't want the high deckers commodified poisonous versions nor do i want to identify myself with the hijackers so i will say this i remain compelled by the jesus story not as history meant to reveal what happened long ago but as poetry meant to illuminate a revolutionary idea powerful enough to heal and free humanity now. and she makes it pretty clear that she likes the idea of christianity and she even goes to say like you know um if jesus was a poor baby in a manger today she would be a black trans whatever you know like whoever is marginalized in society but it's very clear that she doesn't personally have faith in the god of the bible or the rules of the bible or what it stands for or the idea of human beings needing to follow guidelines and be tamed and one thing that she really argues a lot in her book is you know we need to respond to our desires and even if we have a negative desire underneath that desire that seems negative is something good and there's an example that she gives of you know this woman knows that she should not spend money on a beach house for her and her family but she wants to so that desire is bad but Glennon points out that I know you talk about doc, like um, authors by their last name, but it feels different. To, it feels I feel like I want to call her Glennon because she talks about herself as Glennon in the book and not Doyle. And you know, so I want to call her Glennon because that's how she um, spoke to the the reader of the story throughout the book. But Glennon basically points out how you know underneath that desire for a beach house, like she asked a woman like, why do you want a beach house with your family? And really it's because you know they felt really she felt really disconnected from her family and just wanted to be closer to them so you could she could still satisfy that desire without going into debt and what she ended up doing was setting a rule where you know an hour per day they had to spend time together and talk with each other and that desire was satisfied but I don't believe every desire that we have is good and lives <laughs> goes this is like almost like a biblical um, biblical idea of you know the, the desires of men are evil you know and I think of you know what about serial killers you know they might legitimately have an impulse to kill someone and underneath that impulse is how they were wired <laughs> like to kill you know and so for them to succumb to that desire is bad you know and I don't think that every single desire we have I think it is um really a nice view of the world to think that every desire even if those that seem negative have something good underneath but i think that would be too simplistic of a view of the world but i think she has to take that view in order to really argue that being untamed is actually a safe or viable option for human beings and even when reading this i i had to remind myself like something for us to keep in mind is like there is always going to be a hot book of the moment and this book is good but it is not the best memoir I've ever written. I felt like Becoming by Michelle Obama, I loved that memoir. It was extremely well written. It was a unique life story. And for this, it kind of felt like, yeah, it was it was okay writing, you know? It, it wasn't, um, it, she even at one point had an excerpt from Martin Luther King's speech, I Have a Dream, or was it Letter to Birmingham Jail? I can't, um, from Birmingham, I'm not sure which, which one it was, but, if you look at Martin Luther King Jr.'s writing, it is so intricate. It is like the the phrasing, the words, the imagery that come to mind. And Glennon's writing just doesn't have that, but she does have powerful ideas throughout. And she does mention powerful thoughts throughout the entirety of the story. And I think those are worth thinking about. And some of the ideas that I did like, and I'll give one example right now, is um, she talks about how when um, she went to her sons and daughter, son and daughter, and they were with their friends and asked them if they wanted snacks, the boys, like, they kind of, like, thought to themselves, and they're like, yeah, I do want snacks. Like, they realized they were hungry, they looked inward, and the girls, like, looked around to see, like, oh, does anyone else want snack? And they were looking around, they look outward. So I think that was a good lesson, you know, how many times in society do we look to others rather than ourselves to seeing what it is that we really desire and how does society condition men versus women to act in certain ways. I also feel like um, this book has valuable lessons even with like the dangers of like certain politics that um, Christian conservatives can have and she did go into um, I believe it was Ronald Reagan and some of the background on that how um, the, the white evangelical this is at page 241 
White evangelicals became the most powerful and influential voting bloc in the United States and the fuel of the American white supremacy engine. Um, that's how evangelical leaders get away with stunning hypocrisy of keeping their money, racism, misogyny, classes of nationalism, weapons, war, and corruption with while purporting to lead in the name of the man who dedicated his life to ending war, serving orphans and widows, healing the sick, welcoming immigrants, valuing women and children, and giving power and money away to the poor. This is also why all why a political candidate must do to earn an evangelical allegiance is to claim anti-abortion and anti-gay, even if the candidate is a man who hates and abuses women, who stockpiles money and rejects immigrants, who incites racism and bigotry, who lives in every day antithetical to Christian's teachings, Jesus the cross, identity per life, and call just the shiny decals evangelical leaders slap on their own interests. They do they just keep pushing the memo. Don't think, don't feel, don't know. Just be against abortion and gays and keep on voting. That's how you live like Jesus and the devil will has to do has to do the win all the devil has to do to win is convince you he's God. My evangelical friends insist to me that their opposition to abortion and queerness was born in them. They are sincere and convinced, but I wonder. We all be we all believe our religious beliefs were written in our hearts and in the stars. We never stopped to consider that most of the memos we live by were actually written by highly motivated men. And I think she makes really good points about um, people choosing to support certain political candidates because of certain values that they may have but not considering, and many of you already know how I, I did not vote for Trump, I do not support Trump by any means. So yeah, I definitely liked that point. And she also shares a story about how her mom didn't want her to have bangs, so she didn't get it. And you know, her decision to be with Abby, even though her mom had a hard time with that, she had to really make that decision for herself. So yeah, I think there's a lot of good lessons there about like, parenthood you know like her deciding I'm doing this for me and um, eventually as a human being you need to you know make your own life and your own path so that you could be a good parent to your child I did see some critiques saying that um, they felt like it was like a very mom child heavy book but yeah those are just some of the positives so I do see a lot of positives but again this book is very anti-religion and she's written for so long about feeling and being a certain way and I just think of Girl Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis which was the top book for a while and then Rachel Hollis got divorced and she wrote these books and right after she published her second book came out she learned her husband was cheating on her and then th that whole dynamic changed so I think as readers we have to keep in mind that a writer is motivated to neatly tidy up their book and have a little story or an antidote or something for you to read about how now I've figured out life. And in her next book, she could write something completely different, just saying how everything else she said was completely wrong. And there are lessons that are worth picking up, but I don't think that this is the Bible. I don't think that this is the best book I ever read of all time. I think that it is a good book with some good lessons, but I would be wary of recommending it to any of my religious friends because part of the reason I even pushed myself to finish reading it was because I wanted to do this video review and also I have just been pushing myself to read different thoughts opposing views, but I would most definitely not read this again. So those are my thoughts on it, being completely honest. I know so many people raved and loved it and whatever, and maybe I am a little biased because of my religious views, but I wanted to put out a different perspective and a different point of view. Yes, there are great lessons in it, but yeah, there are some lessons that are not that great. And I think it would feel that way even if I were not a Christian. You know, do we need to satisfy every desire? Is it best for us to really be untamed all the time? No, I don't think so, you know? Um, so. Those are some of my thoughts on that. I would love to hear your comments down below if you've read this book or if you've heard a lot of different reviews on it. I don't see a lot of Christians commenting on it, but I do know it's the number one New York Times bestseller at the moment. So I'll see your comments and I'll see you later on this week.